uh, when you just talked about uh, innocence and perpetrators. I have an issue that is going on for several months now about animal abuse. And it's calling up so much anger and so much uh, sadness. And I have worked with it with Holy Spirit for several times. And then I, I'm, I'm at peace at the end of, of the exercise. And then I see it again and again. It comes around and around. And uh, every time I ask the Holy Spirit to help me with this, I see, uh, I see animals suffering and I see this and that. And it's hurting me. I, I hurt uh, inside. And uh, is there anything else I can do about feeling? about uh, helping me with this? That's my question. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, actually we were just in Denmark and, and uh, the venue that they had was a donated venue right next to a slaughterhouse. We literally pull up, we can hear the animals wailing, and we a five-day retreat. Um, oh my God. Not oh. out of the country in the city, but oh. right there. And and so uh, probably like the fourth day of the five day retreat or whatever, they pull me up, and I come out of the car. My head comes up, and I can see over into the the holding yard, and it's literally like a like a ramp uh, of, of steel things, and they're lined up, and there's a whole group of cows looking at me, and we did eye-gazing. Mm -hmm. And it would be no different with if it was a concentration camp in mm -hmm. Nazi Germany and you had a whole row of people light up and and, and they're just kind of looking at me. The cows are, we're doing some eye-gazing, looking at me like they're just like, what is this? What's, what's going on? And so this is good. I'm glad you're raising this because I want to go really deeply into this. Really, really, really deeply and thoroughly into this using the Course, and, and really coming at this with, with Jesus, you know, in the deepest way possible. When, when we perceive a world where there is, is killing, or murder, or death, um, it doesn't really matter the degree of, of, the, of the death. I mean, if, if you were watching there's a movie, uh, Joe versus the Volcano, where there's all these people that are walking along, and there's a tiny little flower that's growing out of the, the cracks. Mm -hmm. And it's just this tiny little flower with a little thing on it, and, and the people are stepping on it. Even when we see a little flower growing through the cracks that keeps getting stepped on and stepped on, there's something that gets triggered. When we perceive animals being mistreated, even, or killed or whatever, there's something that gets triggered. And we have to realize that, that the, what created this world, what created this linear perceptual world, wasn't God. Um, that it was the ego. So it's, this whole world is an invention of the ego. And that's why one of the early lessons is, I have invented the world I see. It's starting to pull the idea that God like we learned from Genesis, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Oh, God created the heavens, all right, but not celestial heavens with stars and black holes and, and different kinds of, uh, you know, realms and so forth. No, God created eternal, the eternal heavens. And the ego projected the earth and the cosmos. And so, the ego is a death wish. So, if everything that the ego projects, is, it, is from the death wish. For example, in this world we get apples from apple trees, we get pears from pear trees, we get bananas from banana trees. In heaven, spirit comes from spirit. All the creations of God are spirit. Christ is actually not a man or a woman. It's, it's a, pure, a purely spiritual extension. That's what creation is. You get the same from the same. You don't get different from the same. It would be like getting carrots from an apple tree. It's ridiculous. You don't, even in this world, we, we don't see you getting different from the same. You get the same from the same. Two people that conceive a child, you have a human being that comes. You don't have two people conceiving elephants. 
or parrots or snails. You, you get humans from humans and you get spirit from spirit. So everything in this linear world, this cosmos, is coming from the ego. It has no validity, no reality. It actually has no existence except as a hallucination in the mind that believes in the ego. So when you get uh, disturbed by what you're perceiving, what your eyes and your ears are, are perceiving, it's really that you're not taking in a perception. Everything that we perceive is pr projected from the ego's belief system. And remember, the ego is a death wish. So when we look at people dying, whether it's in Nazi Germany or animals dying or so forth, we still have the death associated with the form. But the death wish is in the mind, and the form is just being used to hide the death wish. The ego wants us to get upset and project it and blame and, and see the cause in the world, because that's how the death wish is projected, by seeing the cause outside, by seeing the, the cause in the world. And so, um, in terms of, of killing, we need a reorientation to start to realize that perceiving a fragmented world is death. If you perceive differences in time and space, in perception, if you perceive def differences, that is the death. The death isn't happening to cows. The death isn't happening to people or animals. The death is in the fragmented perception. And that's why the Course is so helpful because it keeps saying one problem, one solution. It keeps saying, I mean, I just said this recently and I keep saying this in Course groups all over the world. In 12-step groups, in AA groups, they go around and they say, Hi, my name is so-and-so and, -so, and I, I'm an alcoholic. They all, everyone greets them. They say, we have to start doing this in Course groups. Hi, my name is so-and-so and, -so, and I have a perceptual problem. Because you, you have to admit the problem. Until you can accept the solution. If you say, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I'm here because I'm, I'm having a hard time with my relationship. No. I'm having, I've got financial difficulty. No, you don't. Uh, not really. Uh, I'm, I'm having a problem with, with the animals being killed, with the, the pollution that's ruining Mother Earth. I'm having a problem with wars, with, with countries politically taking over other countries' uh, invasions. I'm, you know, you could go on and on and on. I'm having a trouble. I don't like bacteria. I don't. I just decided I really don't like bacteria. I just have an issue with viruses in general. You know? And and you know, it doesn't matter. You can say anything because. Because until we come to an admission that we have a perceptual problem, that we're looking at a fragmented world, we're looking, the Bible said in Corinthians, looking through a darkened glass, until we come to an admission that the problem is the fragmented perception, and the problem is seeing linear time and all the objects strung out in linear time, then we're just going to keep projecting it out onto specific problems that aren't the problem. And that's how you protect the ego. Okay. It's, it's always in something in form, and it doesn't really matter what that form is. And, and that's also where the healing is. I mean, when I had people start to come live with me years ago in the Peace House, they would do things to like, try to, to see what would happen with me. Like one time, they, the people in the house, they, they had a, a gallon of milk that was really old really old sour milk and they left it in the refrigerator for me <laughs> and so they came home like you know almost like candid camera to just sit and they they came and I went up and I went into the refrigerator and I poured myself a glass of milk and I drank it and they were like they couldn't believe that I just drank the whole glass of milk they, they just couldn't believe it but but when you go into these transcendent states of mind, what is sour milk? I mean, it, it doesn't even have any meaning, you know. In fact, 
you, you almost, you, you could say your appetites go away, some of the foods that you used to enjoy tasting goes away, sometimes the smells go away, it's really lovely. In fact, in the Course, Jesus says, you will tell you practice well by this, the body should not feel at all. Whew. That's the direction this is going in. It's, it's not from a desensitized kind of thing, or a repressed denial sense, but it's from a sense, nothing I see means anything. Nothing I smell means anything. <laughs> nothing I hear means anything. You know, you start, it starts to transcend, you go into these transcendent states. And that's where this is all heading. It's just another opportunity for you to remind yourself, wait, no, no, the, the animals being killed is not what's really happening here. It's the fragmented perception of everything. It's the filter that I'm looking through that needs to be cleansed and healed. And, and Believe me, in the same place, they've had other kind of gatherings there, and people have come and go, Oh no! Oh, please don't have the meeting, the spiritual meeting here! So this, they've told us here, healing been going on there for years around that. You know, it wasn't something that, you know, that was a one-time thing. <laughs> they've been meeting at the same place <laughs> for years, you know, just because they had to transcend it. They had to... Get beyond that. Yeah, we um, in Ireland, um, and I was on this tour, we actually showed a movie called um, Anger Management. And it's actually a movie that a lot of people will have triggers in watching just because the movie actually um, shows the guy, almost uh, portrait the guy as a victim. And the whole movie at the beginning, uh, till maybe three quarters of the movie, was just showing how the guy was mistreated. and. For a lot of people who first watched this movie, they couldn't stay go throughout the movie because it brings up so much anger and so much frustration of watching someone or something being mistreated on the screen. But really it is this huge self-hatred or guilt that's been triggered, you know, inside. And David used to use this metaphor of the ego as being throw poison into the ocean. So, and you sip it a little bit of time, but you never, it basically you dilute the, the poison, but it's still poisonous. So every time there is a huge amount of guilt and self-hatred inside, and every time we project a little bit onto outside specifics, we kind of feel we minimize the guilt because it doesn't feel too horrendous, but we keep it. That's the way we keep it the guilt going every time. And the story can be the same over the years, you know, over decades it's the same. But that's exactly how the ego uses the stories and specifics to keep the guilt. But doesn't make it's too outrageous and you can't manage it. You can manage it, but that's the way we keep it. But Jesus was saying, you know, hold my hand and let's go within together. Let me show you what you think was ho so horrendous is innocent. But you have to be willing to hold my hands and we walk together. So basically what he was saying is, do not keep projecting outside. Do not keep locking into the story outside. And Lesson 79 says, to the degree that you don't define the problem, you will be able to see the solution. So basically, it's very practical. If there is a story that seems to run in your life and keeps becomes a trigger every time, Jesus is just there waiting to say, can you let go of this story in your mind so that you have a space for me to show you what is really the source of this? And you were too terrified to go within, but I'm going to show you there is only innocence and light within. So please let go of this story. That's really what is this about.